Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really appreciate your company. This is the first video of a series that I'm starting with regards to orchid lingo. Now, the lingo that we hear throughout the orchid hobby doesn't just apply to orchids per se, but because I am an orchid channel, I will always just call it orchid lingo, but know that the majority of what I say applies to the entire plant world. Today I want to approach the subject of anthocyanin. We hear that word a lot and sometimes it is a bit confusing and maybe people think they can't ask the question because it sounds like everybody should know about it. And I want to remove that stigma and in this series I'm going to go down to the very, very basics, show you what different lingos in the orchid hobby pertain to and what to watch out for, even if it's like ABC learning the alphabet. I think that it is important to remove any kind of awkwardness when it comes to I don't know what that means, I don't know how to spell it, and for that reason I'm starting this little series. I hope that you enjoy it and I also hope that it will clear up some of the questions that come to mind when watching videos about orchids and then you sit there going, um, am I supposed to know this? Now I feel dumb. My grandma always said, there's no such thing as a dumb question. And that is why I'm going to be starting this series, a new playlist. And it's not like I'm going A, B, C all the way to Z. It just so happens that my first video starts with the letter A, anthocyanin. So you can see I have several orchids out here because every kind of symptom of anthocyanin is different. First off, know that it is not a problem if your orchid shows anthocyanin. And I will show you what to watch out for, whether it is enough anthocyanin, and now it's time to pull the orchid back from too much light, or whether it's just a character trait of the orchid to show more anthocyanin and everything's fine and maintain the light levels. Let's go in and have a little bit more of a closer look-see as to what anthocyanin looks like and then talk about why the orchid is doing that and right at the end i'm going to show you an example of what you might consider being anthocyanin if you see it on your orchid but it is magnesium deficiency because the two pretty much look the same so right at the end i'll show you one example of magnesium deficiency that could be mistaken for anthocyanin so let's go get in here let's start with these three candidates right in a row here this is Lelia alvaruguensis, Lelia diana, and my Brassavola flagellaris over there hanging on the mount. Some orchids, based on their location and what they like out in nature, will develop straight away anthocyanin because they are so exposed. They are exposed to the elements, to the hot sun. Everything about them is just unprotected entirely. Rapiculus lalias have that. They are in a very exposed environment, so I picked out my alvariguenses to show you that despite this orchid having been grown in shade for the past two months, because the angle of the sun now is a bit lower in the sky, and where they live for the time being, it's nice and shady. Meanwhile, a lot of light still, but shaded. You can see that there's a red tinge all around, not just the pseudobulbs, but all the leaves have the red tinge as well. That is a characteristic of the orchid as such, and anthocyanin is a protection mechanism, especially for orchids that do live out in very exposed areas, even if it is, for example, in wooded forests that go deciduous during the winter, and then all the orchid is exposed to sun. So this is like, if we were to, let's say, get a mild sunburn, it looks very pretty, it looks like, you know, we think we look healthier, but the sunburn on our skin is a protection mechanism, much like anthocyanin. If you go beyond what your skin can tolerate, then the sunburn becomes painful, you start peeling, and goodness me, all other kinds of secondary effects might kick in, and that is why we always say, have some protection. For the orchid, that's exactly the same thing. 
Anthocyanin is a mechanism that is produced within the orchid as a form of protection. For us as orchid growers, it is extremely helpful to know anthocyanin when it shows up, how it creeps up, because that is an indicator for us growers, is my orchid getting enough light? Not every orchid will develop anthocyanin, know that, but the majority of them will. So we've taken a dark leafed orchid right here, and now we have a green leaf orchid, and how is that going to show any kind of anthocyanin symptoms? Well, with lighter colored orchid foliage, you would get freckling like this. See those freckles? This orchid is also growing in the same area as my little Lelia over here in shade. But the reflecting light off the walls, all white facade, is giving it plenty of light. And so this freckling shows up as anthocyanin. The orchid is getting enough light. Do all the orchids need to show freckling on the foliage for us to have a signal whether they are going to bloom or not? Nope, they don't. But one thing I do want to mention is anthocyanin is not always predominant when it comes to certain species of orchids. But the color of the blooms will also show you in different bloom cycles whether you're giving your orchid enough light. This is also anthocyanin in the blooms. This is my Peggy Ruth Carpenter. And clearly, this is a division that I took care of at the beginning of the season of 2021, divided her, etc., protected her from the high light that she could tolerate so that she could get established in her pot. And you can see by the comparison photo I'm going to show when she always had her highlight, how different the blooms are colored this time around. These are a little bit aged, so the blush is a little bit more predominant. But when they opened up, they were much whiter, much more cleaner without so much blush on the flare. And it is very, very clear to see by the coloration of the bloom, how much light did the orchid get prior to blooming because once again anthocyanin is not just in the leaves it's also in the blooms to a certain degree but you see my leaves aren't speckled and they wouldn't be speckled even if they got higher light they would go a little bit more of a yellowy color so it's not like every orchid is going to show anthocyanin symptoms based on light levels it's the blooms if you've had the orchid long enough will show you how much light it is getting because the colors can become more vibrant with every blooming depending on the light levels. When I first bought my Peggy Ruth Carpenter, she was white with just some spotting, but she was mainly white. And then when she came into my collection and had all this extra light, she became a completely different bloom. And I was thinking, well, <laughs> here we are. This is not the orchid that I bought, but of course I know I bought her because, you know, she has been in my collection, but the vibrancy of the bloom color changed with the amount of light level, and that is because of the anthocyanin. There are other orchids that are also very, very high light orchids, like my Myrmecophila tibicinus here. Now, she is basically in perma shade, but with a lot of light influence from behind a white curtain. Her natural structures are this burgundy Bordeaux color. And then you can see how the leaves are freckled. And you can see how much more chocolatey the leaves get when they get more sun. All this is anthocyanin to protect the orchid from the light levels that she requires to be a happy orchid. And this is embedded in the makeup of the orchid itself. Overdo it, you can still burn the leaves of a highlight orchid if it is too much, if there isn't enough airflow. Normally, these would live on cliffs and rocks where there's always a breeze going so they can handle and tolerate the intensity of light. What they can't tolerate is the heat that comes with direct sun and without enough airflow, the leaves will burn, like here. For me, that happened with the acclimating process and it's kind of collateral damage in my books to acclimate my orchids. I like to start to push them early so that I don't have to literally fuss over them too much. But the lack of airflow will cause burning, whereas the attributes of the orchid with anthocyanin in them, because of their exposure to the high light where they would normally live, they would be able to handle direct sun as long as there is plenty of airflow. Let me show you my Brassavola flagellaris over here. You can see green leaves down here and up here with a tinge of anthocyanin right there. Now, 
This orchid normally lives in full shade during the summer when it's the hottest months of the year because the angle of the sun is much, much higher. We are now way into fall. The angle of the sun is lower in the sky and is coming full on into where this orchid hangs in my south facing blooming alley. And you can see that the leaves that were exposed to the sun, you can see how poor dough they've gotten. Now, this is okay for now, but if I were to leave her exposed to these levels of light, these leaves would crisp up and burn like the Mimicophila tibicinus that we just saw. And that is because the structure of the orchid itself is not made to have that much light, that intense sun over an extended period of time, even if there is plenty of airflow. The heat literally is going to roast my leaves if I don't pull her back a little bit. So when it comes to the structure of an orchid, when you see anthocyanin, that is a warning sign. Freckling is okay. Freckling is perfect. The orchid will bloom anyway, getting plenty of light. The structure being so thin, that is not okay. This is already bordering on risking the burn. So I'm already pulling her back when the angle of the sun is low and comes into her area, I just flip her around facing away from the sun just to protect her a little bit. And let me just prove a little bit of a point here and pull the sheath back and show you how different it is from where the leaf was protected as opposed to where it was exposed to the sun. There's a distinct line here. So light, lots of light, protected from the light. And in this case, once again, know the structure of your orchid and know when enough is enough. You don't want to ruin the cell structure by overdoing it. Much like, again, when we go sunbathing, there is a moment when we go sunbathing and if we pass that specific time period and we start to burn and we don't seek some kind of shade, our skin is going to burn, and that is exactly the same with orchids. Consider this right here, your bikini line, or sock line. <laughs> right. Another great example with regards to freckling and thocyanin, plenty of light, is this tolumnia. Not the spike, I'm addressing the leaf. You can see all those fine little freckles. That is the orchid getting plenty of light. Again, thin structure, that's enough. Do not push any further beyond this point, is what I would say, otherwise the leaves will burn. And the orchid is still getting plenty of light because you can see by the symptoms of the freckling how high your light levels are. There's no need to go any further than this. Find structures, we have to be careful. Anthocyanin will also occur if you're growing under artificial lights, let me put that out there has nothing to do with the fact that it's sunlight or artificial lights. An example of what looks to be excessive anthocyanin can also be found in structures that are aging. So this is my Lelia perinia, and you can see how the leaf is going yellowy and the back leaf is also very, very reddish, even though she's been in the shade for the past four weeks. One thing is again, the characteristic of the orchid will always have these features. That's how they are. Another thing is to know that the leaf is healthy and it has some freckling on the front. That is enough light influx for this orchid. Too much and they will burn as well. So anthocyanin is a very, very good indicator, a warning indicator for our orchids, for us as growers to know that, yep, we're doing the right thing. We're giving the orchid enough light. And it's also a good indicator as to when we need to pull back reduce the light levels before we incur any kind of burning. Dendrobium hibiki here has the same features. The canes would be the ones that go very, very reddish and Bordeaux when the direct sun hits them for an extended period of time. And then you can also see the vibrancy of the blooms of a hibiki will change and be more predominant if the light levels are correct as opposed to when they are not the leaves would not be showing a reddish hue. They would be more on the dark green side. You wouldn't be seeing any kind of Bordeaux here on the end of the canes. And if all these little factors are in place, the colors of the blooms will also reflect the amount of anthocyanin the orchid actually has. Again, 
blooms have anthocyanin in them. This is my dendrobium berry odor, and this is anthocyanin, and this is anthocyanin at the point of burn. You see the difference? There's a leaf here that's absolutely fine, but these guys, being more tender, when I put the orchid in the sun, it was too much. So by the time the leaves show this color, especially as I'm trying to train her to be more in direct sun over the winter period, this is when I should have pulled her back to avoid burn. I had the signs in my face, I chose to ignore them. You can also clearly see the shadow here that the, this leaf up here cast on the lower leaf when I pull it back. Look, you can see the distinct sock line or bikini line. Same up here and I pull it back and you can see that distinct line as well where the top leaf cast a shadow. So the tender leaves, they already got burnt. All right, collateral damage as we go about our business. But these are the symptoms to watch out for and then pull the orchid back into the shade so that we don't get too many of these burns happening. The orchid talks to us with anthocyanin and we should just be open and ready to pay attention and say, well, if we get a visual aid and we're uncertain, anthocyanin is our best friend. To be able to monitor the amount of light the orchid is getting and to be able to prevent burning. So now we're going to go and have a look at the example that I have where cold damage looks like anthocyanin, but it is because of magnesium deficiency and the orchid wasn't able to hold off the cold temperatures because of lack of magnesium, and it looks like anthocyanin. This is my Neostylus lucneri. Great candidate because here you can see freckling on this leaf right there, and you say, yep, light levels, but look at it a little bit closer and you will see how shriveled the leaf is. It's like from here to the tip, it's sort of closing in on itself, and you would think, well, that's dehydration. No, it's not because not every leaf is doing it. We have another one down here. We've got freckling right at the end here, but the leaf is shriveled. This is cold damage. This is freckling because of a magnesium deficiency, so their cells weren't able to cope with the cold. So this is completely different, and it would have to be addressed and looked at from various angles. Is the leaf looking healthy? No. It's curled in a bit. It is green, but there's an additional symptom to be noted here. And this is not anthocyanin, but cold damage looks like anthocyanin because of magnesium deficiency. Some magnesium deficiency will also have the appearance of anthocyanin. But if you look closer at the structure of the leaf and you see other things going on, then you can determine that it is not anthocyanin and it is magnesium deficiency. As in my case, you can see certain yellowing across the leaves here. It's something that I'm correcting throughout the season. The new fans are coming out pretty clean. Maybe I can correct my magnesium deficiency in this orchid entirely within 12 months, but I doubt it. For me at this point in time, this here is a healthy, freckled, loose, neary leaf. I hope you can see that. Even though it's kinked in the middle here, that is mechanical damage from when it grew and something impeded the growth of the leaf as such. That's not a problem. But you see the freckling over here? That is healthy freckling. And you see the freckling down on this leaf right here? That is anthocyanin healthy freckling. My rainbow forest here? Burn. But I had the signs to tell me, pull it back, pull it back. That is healthy freckling. The orchid is getting enough light, a new leaf comes out, burn. So I'm really hoping that this kind of cleared a few things up to address anthocyanin in layman's terms, what to look out for, and know that the orchid is telling you something. Know that your airflow might not be high enough, that you need to pull the orchid back and not expose it to that much light, she will bloom anyway because clearly, having produced anthocyanin, she has had enough light to bloom. She will also bloom possibly if she never shows anthocyanin, like with my Peggy Ruth Carpenter. But that is also then a difference in the color of blooms. So anthocyanin is not a must in order for your orchid to bloom, but it is a great, great visual indicator for us as growers. Is my orchid getting enough light? 
And if so, now is the time to pull her back, protect her a little bit more. And if she's not blooming for years and years and years, then maybe give her a little bit more light and see if anthocyanin will be produced. But it is a protection mechanism first and foremost, meaning that for some orchids, it could actually be a stress factor. It's all about watching, but I hope you get a better understanding of what anthocyanin is. And if not, if there was something that I missed, or if you have an example you're not sure about, please let me know in the comments below. And as I go through this series, some videos people will have a chuckle and go, well, duh, that is obvious, but maybe not to everybody. Hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this was helpful. I appreciate your time very, very much especially orchid connoisseurs out there. If you've watched this and you know all about anthocyanin and you stuck through with it, thank you. I appreciate it very, very much that you're here anyway. Have yourselves a beautiful day. And as always, on one condition, please stay safe and take care. Bye.